Good morning. I'd like to welcome you back to another edition of our Anchored in the Word Morning Reflection. And uh, yesterday we introduced a new study, and the study that we were doing was talking about how God is working in the world and the nature of Christian ministry. And we saw that God has a very specific calling for people at this moment in history based on what he's doing. What I'd like us to look at this morning is the fact that not only does God have a specific calling for us in this world, and when I use the word calling, I don't mean that we're hearing God's voice and he's telling us go do this or go or don't do that. A lot of the examples that we find in Scripture are not people had a, a direct objective calling, but literally through providence, through God's working in the world, he, he appoints them to tasks. He raises them up. I'm going to kind of get into that a little bit this morning. But what we're going to see is that God gives very specific details about how we are supposed to do the work that he has appointed us to do. And I want us to look at it very practically in relation to our own lives um, after we read the text. So again, Luke chapter 10, we're going to read verses 1 and following, and I'll remind you where we picked up yesterday. It says, After these things the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place, whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse, nor scrip, nor shoes. Salute no man by the way. Into whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if the Son of Peace be, be with you, um, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to try again. And in the same house remain eating and drinking, such with as they give, for the labor is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. And whatsoever city ye enter, there then they receive you, eat such as is set before you. And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Now, if you remember yesterday, we talked about the uniqueness of this ministry. Well, what I want to do this morning is I want to get into some of the details that are unique to this moment in history. To notice that these are people who were appointed to a task that was shaped in how they were supposed to actually accomplish it. So God doesn't just appoint us to tasks and leave us in the dark as to what we're supposed to do. He points us to tasks and he gives us instruction into how we're supposed to function in those various aspects of ministry. So notice what he says in verse 4. He says, carry neither purse, nor scrip, nor shoes, salute no man by the way, whatever house you enter into, first say peace, and so on. And so that's the detail that we're going to look at here for a few minutes this morning. So what are the unique instructions in this text? Well, the first is this. Don't become overburdened by what you're going to bring. He says, carry neither purse, nor scrip, nor shoes. Another way to put it is, this is a minimalist kind of ministry. Now, we know that there are other kinds of ministries where you plant yourself down. And you are planted and you thrive for decades in such a place. But that was not the nature of the ministry that these people were supposed to participate in. They weren't supposed to plant themselves in communities. They were supposed to show up, preach the gospel, be fed, stay in people's homes, and then go on to the next city. It was a very short and focused ministry. He says, don't get distracted in the midst of the mission. Salute no man, by the way. Don't get caught up in conversations and endless disputes. Simply come to a community, preach the message, preparing the way for me, and then I'm going to come after you. That's what he's saying. He's saying, live off the hospitality of those who receive you into their homes. He says, into whatsoever house you enter, first say peace. And if a son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. And the same house remain eating and drinking of such things, for the labor is worthy of his hire. He even says, don't go from house to house. In other words, just live off of what you're given in the places where you're received. A third thing that he mentions, or a fourth thing that he mentions, is that they needed to provide a verification for the message. So he says, heal the sick that are therein. And then the final point is this, preach the gospel. Say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh upon you. As a herald say, the kingdom is coming. The Mess Messiah is coming. And that was the point of their ministry. Now, what we see is that this is a unique ministry. 
this is not exactly a, a ministry that you and I could participate in today because the king has already come. Because uh, in many ways, our ministry is one of planting ourselves in a community and living and thriving and raising our families and trying to reach the people in our sphere of influence. But the point that I'm trying to draw your attention to is that these instructions were given to shape the nature of the way that they went and did the work. And in the same way that they have instructions or had instructions as to how they were supposed to do this, the work, we see the same pattern all throughout Scripture. I mentioned several names. For instance, Noah. What was Noah told to do? Build a boat. And the actual measurements of the boat were given by God. Or what was the instruction given to Joseph? Be faithful, even if people treat you unjustly. And so at the end of Joseph's life, he says, you meant it for evil. God meant it for good, to save much people alive. And so he, he recognized that even though the things that happened to him were evil and hard and difficult, God allowed those things to accomplish greater purposes. And so he was able to be shaped by a trust in the providence of God. Or Moses and Joshua, bear long with the complaining people, lead them into battle to overtake the land of Canaan. Or Ezra and Nehemiah, we see that, that they were instructed to build a wall, or they're supposed to read the scriptures to those who had been brought back. They're supposed to reestablish order in, in the nation. And so the way that they had instruction about that was some of it was given to them by those who sent them, and some of it was shaped by the very scriptures themselves. Or Haggai receives a word from the Lord, and he's told that you need to preach to the people and, and tell them out of your complacency, turn to God, rebuild the temple, give your attention to that. I think of Esther. She, she was uh, told by Mordecai, she, he, says, he says, you know, how do you know that deliverance will not come to the Jews through you? And you know what? If you don't do this, deliverance is still going to come. But maybe you have been raised to this position for such a time as this. What is Mordecai saying? He's saying, somebody has put you in that place, Esther, so step up or someone else will. Or then Ezekiel, preach to hardened people who are part of the exile. In all of these examples, what we see is that not only did God have unique callings on these people's lives, unique opportunities before them, challenges before them, but they were all given instruction as to how they were to function in those capacities. So you may be sitting here this morning and you're saying, well, well, Joel, I'm not Noah, I'm not Joseph, I'm not Esther, I'm not Moses or Nehemiah. So what are the instructions for me? How, how am I supposed to function in the capacity that I've been called to? Let me give you some thoughts to consider in closing. One of those is be a faithful Christian. What I mean is before you're a husband, before you're a father, before you are involved in some kind of ministry, you are a Christian. That is the core of your identity. And so before you can be a faithful husband and father or pastor or missionary or evangelist or Christian school teacher or you know, worker at uh, some other location in the secular world, a teacher, whatever it is, before you are that, you are a Christian. So be a faithful Christian. Grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then be a faithful spouse according to the scriptures and what they say. Be a faithful parent according to the scriptures. Bring your children up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Be a faithful citizen of the United States of America. In this nation, we have the opportunity to voice our opinion. We have the opportunity to vote. We have the opportunity to be involved in governance and influencing uh, those who are in public, uh, public officials and power. And so we need to be involved as good citizens, Christian citizens, of a land that, yes, is very secular, but needs Christian influence. Have a burden for souls. Get out and proclaim the gospel. When your church has door-to-door -door evangelism, go out on door-to-door -door evangelism. When you see there's a young Christian in the church, spend some time drawing, drawing them under your wing and, and teaching them the basics of the Christian life. Be a faithful church member. Get involved in the opportunities that are available to you. So when we talk about the specific instructions that God gives, in all of these different contexts, there are unique commands of Scripture and instructions of Scripture that are meant to shape how people function in those capacities. And so I want to challenge you this morning with some very basic things. Let's be faithful according to the Scriptures. I hope that's been a challenge to you. If it has, 
feel free to share that. Maybe post it along with something else. Uh, that'll be an encouragement to somebody else. And uh, Lord willing, tomorrow we'll continue our study. Bye now.